welcome to Famous Guys by Alex. Leeuwenhoek was considered the father of microbiology. He gained prestige and made numerous invaluable discoveries. How? Well, that's what this documentary is about. Leeuwenhoek was born in Delft, Netherlands, October 24, 1632. After education, Anton proceeded to become a linen draper's apprentice and set up his own fabric shop in Delft. Leeuwenhoek did many things before his microscopic discoveries, such as a city official, a surveyor, and as trustee of the estate of Jean Vermeer, a famous artist who is believed to be Leeuwenhoek's friend and is said to have shown him in a few paintings of his. They were both born in the same city, Delft, within a month of each other. They grew up together, and in fact Vermeer trusted van Leeuwenhoek enough to make him the executive of his will, and which von Leeuwenhoek uh, dispensed after Vermeer's death in 1675. Where their paths cross, we think, is the fact that Vermeer painted a picture in 1669 called The Geographer. The very same year, von Leeuwenhoek uh, got his credentials as a surveyor, a geographer. Leeuwenhoek's interest in microbiology not only spawned from the fact that drapers need to make intricate designs using magnifying glasses, but also from reading Robert Hooke's Micrographia, noting Hooke's discovery of cells. His interest with microscopes led to an ultimately significant insight. Small, glass balls working as lenses in his microscopes, magnifying specimens up to 200 times compared to the average 20 to 30 times of earlier microscopes. These microscopes allowed him to make startling discoveries. He sent his early microscopic observations by mail to the English Royal Society, England's, and most of Europe's prominent scientific society. On September 17, 1683, Leeuwenhoek sent his first scientific drawings of single-celled organisms, which he called animalcules, to the Royal Society. These came from the plaque between his teeth. He remarked, A little white matter, which is as thick as if it were batter. Leeuwenhoek's discoveries were at first met with skepticism. <laughs> In all kinds of water, standing in the open air, animalcules can turn up, for these animalcules can be carried over by the wind along with the dust floating in the air. Single-celled organisms were unheard of at the time. After many of Leeuwenhoek's protests that it was the truth, the society sent over an English vicar to settle the matter. As you may have guessed, Leeuwenhoek was right. With the vindication of Leeuwenhoek's observations, he was appointed a fellow of the English Royal Society and sent 560 more letters to them and other institutions over the next 50 years, after which he died on August 30, 1723, at the age of 90. Leeuwenhoek, in his lifetime, was the first to discover living cells through his innovative new microscopes. He did a great deal more, too, which we didn't bother to mention earlier, like discovering infusoria, bacteria, spermatozoa, and how blood flows through capillaries. In his time, he ground 500 optical lenses, and even through all his fame and prestige, he was known to have said, my work was not pursued in order to gain the praise I now enjoy, but chiefly from a craving after knowledge. And therewithal, whenever I found out anything remarkable, I have thought it my duty to put down my discovery on paper so that all ingenious people might be informed thereof. You know, nowadays a lot of people talk about looking for life in outer space, but what Leeuwenhoek did in many ways is just as amazing. He found life trillions and trillions of examples that nobody even imagined living quite literally under our noses. Leeuwenhoek discovered living cells, the building blocks of life, or the smallest known organism. He discovered what caused disease and made microscopes that opened eyes to the microscopic world. As they say, Leeuwenhoek was the father of microbiology. And as we say, he was a famous guy.